Wonderful uh, opportunity to, uh, to join in on this Parker experience. Thank you all for having me. And I'm honored to do a kickoff experience as we start to get going here. Um, my great joy is, is speaking to chiropractors. And what I look out and see are, are a lot of great chiropractors here, but man, we gotta elevate this enthusiasm because you know, what we're gonna be talking about more than anything is, as, we, as the title says, what we're gonna be talking about is something called why did the chiropractor cross the road? <laughs> you know, it's one of those enduring messages that, uh, that we would like to get going with. And you might be thinking, well, hey, listen, why would I cross the road? What is there across the road that I might want to go to? So when we start talking about this idea of why did the chiropractor cross the road, we probably should look at the historical perspective of why did the chicken cross the road? Because, you know, that is really one of the most enduring questions that we all rattle around in our head. Well, if you go online, and you know, Google knows everything, but if you go online, there's some really, really raunchy stuff as to why the chicken crossed the road. You don't want to even know about that. But the truth of the matter is, is that there is this sort of philosophical perspective of why would anybody ever want to leave where they are? You know, maybe we should be thinking in terms of, of this whole notion. So in one way, when the chicken crosses the road, there's peer pressure, you know, chicken! It's not easy, right, to cross a road. And I think that what we recognize is that when we're in practice and when we start to experience this, this oh, this sense of urgency, this sense that we want to be different in where we want to go, we start to realize that we look outward so often versus looking inward. And when we look outward so often, what happens is, is that we look and we are driven by the perspective of our peers. And that is a dangerous place to be because the perspective of the peers is the lowest common denominator. It's what's holding you into that side of the road that you are on. Of course, there is that next step that says, what if we were to go there? And when we start doing this, we say to ourselves, wait a minute, why am I doing this? We're caught in the middle of traffic, it feels like. And in the midst of this change, we start to experience all of this energy that could be dissipated. And that's not a very comfortable feeling, is it? It sort of is like when you're standing in the middle of traffic thinking, how did I get here? I remember that experience when I was in Saigon one time at Ho Chi Minh City. And I'm thinking, how do these people survive? And I felt like this chicken in the middle of the road thinking, what in heaven's name am I doing here? Everything buzzing by you and the rest of it. But here's the interesting thing, is that I was the one who was out of sync with the rhythms that were going on in that culture. I was the one who was making that decision to frustrate those drivers. And yet in my world, it was my perception that they were frustrating me. So you see, if we are going to get to this place in our lives, if we are going to try and get to this exciting place where we start to get going with our lives, then we have to really understand the nature as to where we are going, why we are doing this, and most importantly, come Monday, if you get to go and do this, then this is really one of those moments in your life where you get to say, I did cross the road. You see, crossing the road is really a metaphor for saying, there's a restless urge. There's a sense of something of the adventure. When I was growing up, you know, I probably was, was, was uh, uh, sadly, you know, uh, Brian and I were talking about the age of, of the growing up. And uh, interestingly, he and I are born in the same year. Damn, I look a lot better than him. But the, 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 the truth is, is that when we were growing up, uh, you know, the adventure wasn't even so much about about this notion as to, as to what you would do. It was, it was taking the tools, the media that was there. National Geographic was our adventure magazine at those times. And I know you're thinking that we were all, you know, getting it to take a look at those bare-breasted African women, but the truth was is that we were much more interested in looking at the geography of where that crossed road could be, where we could, where we could go in our lives. And so as this kid that was just dying to try and explore I started to realize that it was all in front of me and there was this glorious opportunity to just enjoy playing and being. And so when we got to that point and when I got to that point of thinking, what road would I have to cross to become a person of influence in life? I started to think maybe in healthcare. 
Now, I think most of you who have heard me before know that I didn't quite stumble into healthcare. I actually took a circuitous route, and I'm a mathematician. I took my, my undergraduate in mathematics. And you might think, well, how in heaven's name does, a, does somebody who's doing math end up doing what we do in chiropractic? And it's a very simple point of view. Let me tell you that the undergraduate of mathematics is the absolute finest training to become a chiropractor. And can you imagine why? <laughs> You're thinking, no, I can't. Why would the hell would you cross the road doing that? The truth of it is, is that it's logical. The most logical thing that you can do is understand chiropractic. It is the simplest, most elegant perspective of anything that I have found on the planet. It doesn't have any weirdness to it at all, you know? You can make it a metaphysical perspective, you can take it a quasi-religious perspective, but at the end of the end of the end of the day, what we stand for is so logical and so wonderfully delivered, it is just so darn good that it only makes sense that we change the world with the power of an adjustment. That's all it is. Do you agree? Do you agree? Come on, let's do it, because if you're going to leave here and change and cross the road, you got to know what you stand for. And that's where we come into this really interesting perspective as to why would you want to cross the road? Well, it all begins with this. Is this the road sign in your life, in your practice? I hope not. I mean, let's get serious with this. If you're wandering somewhere on this road map that has this lost and very lost perspective, that's not a very cool way to be. That's a pretty scary way to be. So at some point, you're going to have to define exactly what you stand for. Now, this is an amazing institution. The Parker Experience is there. We certainly have, have legendary chiropractic history here. Um, as Brian and I were sitting in, in the back sort of prepping up with this, I was reminded about the history of coming to the early Parkers. Charlie, you would, you would of all people know this, and Larry, wherever you are, you would know this, but, but coming to Parker, Dallas, was one of, the, one of the most fun experiences that you could have. That was the era where there were six Parkers per year, and every two months you would plan more than anything to get over to the Parker that was going on. And Parker, Dallas was the most fun that you can imagine. There are stories about heading out to, to Fort Worth from here that I could never tell you. There are, <laughs> there are stories of the Adolphus Hotel, which is it still here? It must be, not too far away. And there are stories of the bicycle bar that was in, I think maybe even this hotel that we're in somehow. But I say that because it wasn't about just the, just the relationship with the Parker. Parker represented a congregation of the most exciting times as a chiropractor, of the most exciting times of growth and development in your practice, and there was a energy that was being developed. There was a surge that we could depend upon that every two weeks, two months, it would be nice every two weeks, every two months you would get re-energized with the power of the, of the Parker experience or the Parker seminars as they were called. This was big stuff. And as I look out and see where we're at, there are people that have come a very long way. There are clients of ours that have come from, from England who have come here to have a new experience. It's growing again. The Parker experience is ready to be that derivative that's going to make a difference in life. In fact, as we start to look at the what crosses the road in our lives, we're going to watch Parker emerge. And you see, this is a metaphor for not being happy with where you're at, not being thrilled with mediocrity. This is where we're going to grow. And so Parker represents this movement out of being lost or very lost on your journey. It's a terrible waste of time to be lost on this simple path that we have. And I'm talking about now in practice. You see, practice is a representation of where we create our lives. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that, 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 that the practice you have reflects those securities and insecurities that drive you? And it's, a, it, it's like every other great business experience is that you get paid handsomely when you got it right. I'm going to tell you that 
when you can afford to wait without anxiety is when the certainty and the, and the ability to manifest is coming right at you. And so it all begins with this notion that you have this restless urge that's driving you to become more certain. And you see, Parker represents an opportunity to learn those skills, but at the same time, you still have to leave here and make Monday different. And that's when you're going to be caught in this road that needs to be crossed. This road that needs to be crossed is your dilemma and your opportunity at the same time. You see, we live in this most incredible opportunity called chiropractic. I'm blessed. I have been in practice for 35 years, and I don't remember a day, everybody has a day, I don't remember a multitude of days of where I didn't wake up and say, how did I ever get so lucky not to be in math? You know, to move on from, to move on from math was the best thing that ever happened to me. I mean, can you imagine? I'd be in some, I'd probably be an actuarial. Now, how boring would that life be? I mean, let's face it. Figuring out insurance potential is not exactly what is so exciting. Adjusting babies. Now, speaking about babies, you were sitting here, and there was a baby in your arms. Where is that baby? Uh, being fed. Is that baby to be? Oh, OK. So I want everybody to look over here. I'm serious. I'm serious. Would you mind standing up, please? OK. This is. This is James Parker the third, and this is James Parker, Dr. James Parker the second. This is Legacy in Action. <laughs> Welcome and thank you. It's so cool. You know, when Brian, was, when Brian was giving his address and he talked about the past, the present, and the future, here we are, okay? And, and I just want you to know that you probably were in the same room as I was, sitting at your father's, well, you probably weren't sitting, as I never sat at my father's. Uh, you know, side. It was more like you were terrorizing something around the whole process because we all did that. But I remember, yes, I remember those days in, in the MGM in, uh, in Vegas, and you would, would remember those too. And uh, uh, those were so much fun. So anyhow, thank you for, for of course, uh, being here, but of course, a legacy. Congratulations. <laughs> so here we are. We're on this, this incredible journey, and we find ourselves needing to, I would describe it as Dr. Tracy Wilson. Is Tracy in the room? Yeah, okay, so there he is. As Tracy and I were talking about, Tracy gave a fantastic couple of hours of day one, day two, just before this. If you didn't catch it, get the videos. I'm telling you, this guy is a master at putting together the voice of reason with a Texas drawl. He's just, a, he's, just a, uh, he's just one of those amazing kids from Lubbock that gets it all right every day when he's in practice. And we were talking about it, and where we're going to take this next part of this, this, this opening address that I get to do is this notion that when you cross the road or why you cross the road, you better be able to put your ka-chunk flag in the ground. And as we were talking about today, and I want to honor Tracy because this is his message, and I'll steal it, of course, is that when... We put the flag in the ground, and it's an American flag. You know you are on American soil. You know that it stands for the values of America. You know that it stands for what America's strength and power is. When you go to France and you see the flag that's there, ka-chunk, you don't get mistaken that you're in America. You're in France, ka-chunk. And you know that the values and the strength and the power that's represented by this flag is where you are at that moment. Let's not confuse the two. And you see, this is where we have to move away from lost and very lost in our world, and we need to start saying, I stand for this. This is who I am as a chiropractor. And that's a problem, because in most cases, the message that comes out of this grinder that we have, which is called the life of a chiropractor, gets distorted and, and moved away from the primal, simple, logical message of the major premise. There is a universal intelligence in all things which gives to it all of its properties, thereby maintaining it in existence. Simple, couldn't be even more clear than anything. The first four words of the major premise say it all. A universal intelligence is. 
when we open the door to plant the flag of chiropractic, it's not a subset of medicine. It is not a therapy approach. It is based upon vitalism. It's based upon the fact that a universal intelligence is in all things, thereby giving it all its properties and maintaining it in its existence. It's a statement of fact. It says that we acknowledge all of the universal forces that exist, and yet we understand that what drives this is an intelligence. And if we understand intelligence, and it's not intelligence in this language, is not about being smart. It's not knowledge. That's a component of it. The intelligence that we refer to in both universal and innate intelligence, because this is where we come from, is the principle of organization to a higher place. When a system is intelligence, when this piece of metal and plastic, it is infinitely intelligent because it exists. It exists because it is organized, and it just so happens that if there is a living intelligence, which is what we understand that the human potential is about, and we allow it to become more organized and more adept at its capacity to interpret itself in its environment, as Fred Barge said, then we have this intimate, ultimate, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent process that is the intelligence of life. And who, let me tell you, a mathematician doesn't get to work with that, but let me tell you, a chiropractor does. And when you embrace this principle that that is your flag in the ground, that that is what gets you going and gets you to start thinking about what it means to be a chiropractor, you never get lost. You can go and do a shoulder, you can do a shin that needs to be managed, but when you stand back in awe and you get to see the presence of reorganizational healing occurring, through the power that is imbued in every one of your 37 trillion intelligent cells, this is where you have this opportunity to go, holy mackerel, did I make a good choice being a chiropractor. Wow, I get to do this every day, hundreds of times. You know, Stevenson said it best, that if you want to put yourself in the place of where chiropractic makes its greatest mark, it can be summed up in two simple words of what the desired outcome of chiropractic is, and it very simply is this, it's to arouse innate, to wake up that sleeping giant that is allowing chiropractors to give life, not life or death, but to give more life to the experience that that human has in front of you. You know, the pain that they have may be that moment that they need to come in contact with you. That moment that brings them in, cut in touch with a chiropractor is that nirvanic moment that allows them to see the light unless you stop that process. If you hold back when you go to plant your flag, if you stop and, and, and allow the opportunity of their needs to transcend your ability to give that wisdom choice that's called this universal experience, that's on you, not on them. That's on you because you're a chiropractor. You're not a therapist. You're not a medical doctor. You're not an under-service medical doctor. You're not an over-qualified physiotherapist. You are a perfect, and I mean perfect, chiropractor who is fully, fully capable of understanding that there is an interference in the capacity of that person in front of you. I didn't say that spine. I didn't say that nervous system. I said that total person in front of you to be the best they can with what they have. And that is something that defines you in your marketplace. Nobody's doing it but us. When Mark Mandel says that we need one million chiropractors, it's not because low back pain in westernized society is taking over. When Mark Mandel says that we need one million chiropractors, it's because there are seven billion people who need to have their lives re-engaged. You see, that's the power of this Parker experience. This is why I come to Parker. This is why I love to be affiliated with Parker is because it brings us with the big thinkers. 
I didn't get into this game, and I know every one of you did not get into this game to be mediocre. So let's do a little exploratory model and say, let's uncover your version of your chiropractic journey. Let's get a chance to try and define if you are where you want to be. Let me share with you that in the next few minutes, what I'm going to do is, is, is let you in a little bit under the hood of this world I get to live in. And it's a pretty cool world, let me tell you. It's a really cool world. As I said in the earlier days, I served my community as best as I could. And I really mean that, is that I woke up every day and I thought, I'm living the, living the life. I'm, I'm the, you know, the Marcus Welby of, of 2015, meaning I'm the family doctor, and I don't have to be an MD to be the family doctor. I'm the family chiropractor. And here's a surprise. Because I always wanted to be the family chiropractor, guess what I got in my practice? You know what it is, families. We would wake up every morning and go into, Larry, thank you for the affirmations, but we would wake up every morning and we would take it to the team and we knew that we were relevant to four generations, at least four generations of every person who walked in that door. That was the motivating force, is that we were driven by a generational perspective. Is that I had to, when I had that belief system, come to this decision that I had to fill my toolbox up, which is why you have CE credits here. I don't want you getting CE credits for ICD-10. I want you getting the best darn skill sets that you can do to go and serve your community. And I'm hoping that you'll walk away from something like this thinking, four generations, an adjustment that's done on a newborn is not the same as an adjustment that's done on a nearly dead. Okay? The seniors and the rest of them have their place to be adjusted differently. There's a conversation to a family member that's different than the conversation to a pain-based patient. You have to be skilled to do this. And this is an environment that teaches you that you have all those tools. This is a place where you can grow it. So when we go to uncover your journey, you probably will recognize that you've walked through some of these different versions of chiropractic. So let me share with you that what we're going to talk about is a version of chiropractic which is sadly known as version 0.0. .0. It's a zero-sum game. And if you're in my world and you get a chance to, I'm, I'm basically speaking on at least four continents and I'm over 40 weekends this year. It'll be 40 weekends that I'll be out teaching in programs like this. And I think that I last counted that I'm going to have spoken to somewhere around 12,000 chiropractors this year. The reality is, is that I have a pretty good perspective of what works and what doesn't, or at least in the room, what works and what doesn't. If you are playing the therapy game, and I hate to, to come across as, as this sort of all-knowing third party, whatever else, but take it from my opinion. If you are playing the therapy game and you are focusing on catering to the pain and symptom message that, that the patient undoubtedly is going to come in, Look, we're, we're, we are positioned in the marketplace as somebody who can help you in the healthcare system. It's up to us to build on that, not to take it away. But the truth is, is that if we get a chance to talk to that patient after that entry point and we miss the opportunity to move them or elevate them, then we are going to have a very small relationship with them. Sadly, I'm a CMCC grad. No, I loved being a CMCC grad, but sadly, my alma mater now endorses this as an outcome. They endorse the fact that it's probably dangerous to go to a chiropractor who suggests that you should go beyond symptoms. <laughs> How about that? Functionality never even measured into the whole process. So the reality is, is that there is this next level where we can define where four different versions exist. And so if we take a look at where we go with version 1.0, this is what is known as spinal wellness. This is a glorious place to be because it helps you understand that there is a connection, and we're going to describe it as a glove and hand connection between the spine and the functioning nervous system. Now, one of the things that we are going to hear a lot of as we go from here forward is that this universal intelligence that we're talking about has to be transmitted or at least expressed through a perfectly organized array. And it just so happens that this wired system, which you may think is, is sort of like the, the hard wiring of a communication system, it's anything but. What we now understand is that the nervous system in its communication is more like a cellular system, that there are towers that 
uh, which, are, which are transmission points within your body, which we might refer to as the ganglia if we're looking at the autonomic system. But there are ganglia and there are towers that transmit neurotransmitters to every cell of your body when you have either a thought, a feeling, an emotion. It's long gone when we start talking about spinal wellness that we associate simply with a bone out, pinchy nerve causing problem. Although there is a, 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 an end stage pathology that might be associated with the good old garden hose theory, the reality is, is that we now view this relationship between the spine and the nervous system as a glove and hand relationship that allows us to understand how we function in a gravitational field, but at the same time, we exceed expectations by being able to transmit these beautiful thoughts and feelings without this interference of gravity or otherwise. This is a beautiful place to begin your journey to find your version of chiropractic, but it isn't about pathologizing, it's about harmony. It's about finding that perfect balance between structure and function. And it becomes this journey that is very reportable and relevant to a patient. Patients love the idea that there's something more than version 00. zero. Patients adore the fact that they've moved away from somebody who's going to give them an Advil or some other drug that's going to merely suppress their pain. We know the value of chiropractic inversion. 1.0 talks to this feeling and function, and you'll notice that there are divisions of the nervous system, and it isn't just simply that small sensory division that we're looking at. This is, this is the, the notion that your functionality as somebody who is a healthy, well-organized person is at risk. And do you know, what, you know what happens when we start to lose this capacity to engage our environment, when we start to react in a very, you're gonna listen to Mike Hall tomorrow, let me tell you, fill your toolbox up. Is Mike gone tomorrow? Fill your toolbox up and go and get a little lesson in neurofunctional experience. Michael and I have the pleasure of, of lecturing at times together. Thanks to Brandy McDonald and, and Don McDonald, they put us together. And you're gonna learn that when we bring posture and function in, it's a reflection of what's going on in the autonomic system. And why am I saying that on an opening address? Because I want you to think and I want you to have this experience that says, I am so freaking great, but there is a rational, logical approach to it. It's not making it up as we go. This is the way the world works. The world works if you are in harmony and sync with it. You see, you have all the tools in every patient you have, and the symptoms that they bring you are the guide to say, where did we lose this? Where did we lose this opportunity? And so that's when we start to go into what we call version 2.0. And version 2.0 says, hey, if the adjustment is all powerful, what can I teach you as the doctor, as your trusted advisor? What can I teach you that's going to allow you to make better choices between adjustments? What can I teach you to help you discover your ability to Forget about remain well. Did you know that the concept of maintenance is completely antagonistic to this? How do you maintain perfection? You don't. You don't get there and hope and wish that it's there. And what if the perception is, you know, less than perfect? Well, I'm going to keep you at less than perfect. You know, well, I guess that's as good as we get. Thanks a lot for showing up. Just keep coming. And what's the knock on chiropractic? They just keep you coming. But if you teach them this notion that you are a partnership, that you have this relationship with them to change their lives, not just with the adjustment, but being in the presence of a wise person, being in the presence of somebody who understands that universal intelligence flows and that you have this ability to arouse an eight and that you have this ability to support them and help them understand whether it's gluten-free diets or whatever you wanna do or supplementation, I don't care. But so long as you are engaging them to give them the tools, you have morphed into version 2.0. And version 2.0 is a glorious way to spend your days. In fact, it's where we probably spend most of our days and don't even know it. But did you know that there was a version 3.0? Because I have to tell you this, is that when you put your hands on a spine or when you put a conversation into the mix, you're not merely having a local experience, you're not merely having a spinally local experience, 
you are changing that person in every cell of their body. Did you know that when you adjust a subluxation, that you are adjusting every cell of their body? That their ability to perceive, that their ability to conceive, that their ability to achieve is all related to this brain-to-body function. And this is not new to chiropractic. There's something called the safety pin cycle. There's something that was built into our lexicon years and years and years ago that told us that when we had disafferentation that we could almost immediately understand that garbage in, put garbage out. Put it together, get the connection back, and what do we have? An opportunity for perfection. And let me share this with you, is that when you start allowing yourself to realize the impact you have on the brain, when you start to work with, and I get a chance so, such a cool part of my life, to work with brain-based researchers, to, to take a look at the data that's being collected, to understand, so Heidi Havik, who's doing her work down at the New Zealand School, is a world leader in understanding the power and the impact of the subluxation adjustment on the perception of the human in their environment. A group that I support is the Australian Research Foundation, the SRF, and they put on Parker in Australia, and so when I was invited to come down and, and collaborate and speak at Parker in July, and thank you very much, Parker, for inviting me to come down and do that, I was honored because the story was all about brain-based wellness. The story was think big. Think where your adjustments are changing the person. Do we have a role in being the trusted advisors? Do we have a role in leading the community away from this crisis of autism, in this crisis of ADHD? Do we have a role? What do you think? Without a doubt, right? And yes, you're going to give them great advice, but let me tell you, and I don't want to bore you on this, but when you give an adjustment, especially that's tuned, to associating with the parasympathetic tone, and you start giving adjustments that associate with cerebellar function, you are affecting the prefrontal cortex, you are affecting the behavior of that child every time you adjust them. And I'm not talking about add a boy and pat him on the back. An adjustment does that and accelerates it. You are rewiring, you are canalizing pathways that associate with something that is so powerful you can't even get your head around it. We're gonna take a look when we start talking about brain-based wellness, I'm gonna share with you that the hottest topic in healthcare right now, the hottest topic, forget about chiropractic, the hottest topic in, in healthcare right now is a word that we forgot but was really all about us. And it's the simple word called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the, w is the game of life. When I went through school, and when many of my colleagues in here went through school, it was basically assumed that if you lost brain-based function, you were gone. It was done. You know, it was kind of like you snapped off a piece of the, of the equipment and it wasn't going to happen again. Anybody in here know spec scans? Dr. Amon, spec scans and the rest of it? Basically, they're a three-dimensional image that's built on the, on the capacity of the brain itself to communicate within itself. And they take categories of people and look at spec scans and see what awful communication has happened. Drug users, you wanna know who some of the worst spec scans show up with? NFL linemen. NFL linemen, contact sports, ruins communication. Forget about knocking around the, the brain and the coup contra coup injuries and all the rest of it that we were taught. This is about interfering with the reorganizational capacity of that human being to think, to act, to learn, to be. And when that happens, they have to get rewired. And what we know and what we're seeing is that when you apply a chiropractic adjustment and you start to give greater input into that processing array, that miraculous things happen, that we start to see a canalization, and this is called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity means that we own plastic brains. Forget the plastic spines. Those things are for the version 0.0. .0. Plastic brains is where it's at. It means that we have the plasticity 
which means that we don't have hard edges. We have soft edges when it comes to healing. It means that we have opportunity. And it means that you and I are the original neuroplasticians. We built this whole profession based upon the idea that you could be better. And now neurosciences are reminding us that that is always in play. In fact, it's a gene-based response. The epigenetics of this are built in our favor. All you have to do, does this sound chiropractic or not? All you have to do is remove interference and let the genius of the body take itself forward. And we gave it up. We gave it up. If you've heard me talk before, there's this little, we struggle with trying to talk our own lexicon. I love the word subluxation. Heck, my company's URL is subluxation.com. I'm standing on it. Like, it's a good thing. We worry about whether the patients get it or not. This small little company came in about four years ago called Lumosity. And they didn't hold back. They said, there's four of us. We're neuroscientists. They really aren't, but they said they were. They're neuroscientists. And what they said was, you know what? When you play these little games that help you think a little bit more actively, time and repetition, well, you know what happens is you become engaged in a neuroplastic experience. They use the term neuroplasticity. They own that principle of neuroplasticity. 35 million, 35 million unique signups in year one. Do you think the world is searching for neuroplasticity? 60 million year two. Heck, we're lucky if we get 12 likes on a chiropractic page. Here's the reality, everyone. We own this principle and we're dropping the ball. But when you come to Parker, you get a chance to reinvigorate your experience. When you come to Parker and you hang out, whether it's in the bicycle bar or at the Adolphus like we used to do, you start to realize that there's this community of caring people, that there's these communities that have had the Charlie Wards come and talk to you for the last 30 years, the Larry Marksons for the same 30. Heck, who am I kidding? You guys have been at this a lot longer than 30 years coming here. So the truth of it is, is that we have this opportunity to make a difference. And I put a fourth category in because, you know what, it started to talk about it, and it's about this principle called greatness. Greatness is our legacy. It's not healthcare. It's not even potential. It's about experiencing something we can't even define. How do you define greatness? You know what? There isn't an Olympian that doesn't go out to beat the old record. That's greatness. And so you have to ask yourself, if you're going to cross the road, if you're going to get into this experience of trying to build this next level, are you willing to do it? Are you willing to step out of whatever version you're in and begin with certainty to know that you have the potential in you to create greatness in your practice, in your life, in your community, and in every one of those adjustments you give? You see, greatness is your destiny. When you chose chiropractic, whether you knew it or not, greatness is your destiny. It's up to all of us. I want James Parker III to have a legacy that is so rich that I've handed him off, you know, that classic lighting the candle. I want that little man over there, if he chooses to, to, to he'll grow up a chiropractic person as, I, as my children grew up, in chiropractic, I want that little baby to have every opportunity to flourish, and he will, because his parents understand the bigness of life. As BJ put forward, as Jim Parker put forward, as Reggie Gold put forward, as Charlie Ward puts forward, as Larry Markson puts forward, as Tracy Wilson puts forward. You see, this is the legacy of greatness, and greatness is your legacy but it's up to you to handle it. You see, this is where you have to decide if you're going to cross the road. If you decide you're gonna cross the road, you have to understand very simply that all versions have one thing in common. Whether it's pain on the version 00, zero or whether it's greatness on the version 4.0, every one of them has one version that matters, and that is, is the supremacy of the nervous system. Why the nervous system? Because it's what communicates universal and innate intelligence. It's what allows this physical 
form we have to function in harmony with the environment. It's this reactivity we have that allows us to have an emotional experience, a physical experience, a biochemical experience, and everything that is human, every thought, every feeling, every movement, every action, every glandular burp that's happening in you spontaneously that is going on without you thinking, because that's educated, without you thinking, is happening spontaneously because you have this in play. So when we start talking about it, we recognize that the original dictates were this notion of life. Not an action potential, but life flowing from above, down, inside, and out. We experience this. This is today's technology that looks at life as it might happen in a neurophysiological array. Your choice. Your choice when you go to make an adjustment on Monday is whether or not you are willing to look and see if the orange bits are being managed or if the blue bits are being managed. Your call. Because I can tell you that it's happening regardless whether you are on that vision point or not. It's happening. When you give an adjustment into that neural dural array, the reality is it's changing. It's your choice if you want to see that happen. So let's talk about it. Who ha he who has the agenda rules. Now, this is the, the, that, that's the drowning man syndrome. You don't want to be in that. The drowning man syndrome is, is that a patient is going to confront you on Monday and say, oh, I've got the back and neck pain. Dollar sign? Your choice. The reality is, is that when you start to realize that you have this power, when you start to realize that you are all powerful with this message, that you are the neuroplastician, you're going to feel so compassionate for that person who has the pain that you're going to tell them the whole story of chiropractic. You see, it's the compassionate person, the doctor in you, the chiropractor, the universal intelligent student who's in you that's going to say, I care enough about you that I am going to teach you the power of a chiropractic lifestyle. And that's your legacy. That's where you are going to go. The drowning man syndrome says that if you get hooked up with this, they're taking you down. The most dangerous person in the world is somebody who's drowning. They are just going to pull you down because they are there to survive. And your practice is probably very full of drowning men. And so challenge yourself. Be excited. S cross that road. Don't hold yourself back from that moment that will define you. These are the moments that define you as a chiropractor. These are the moments that define chiropractic. And you know that neuroplasticity, subluxations, and you notice it doesn't say rehabilitation, it says rehabituation are the keys of the future. It's all built in there in your lexicon. It's all built in there in your wisdom. It's all built in there in the people that you see every day in your practice. You are great. You are amazing. You are the best that there can be. Let it out of you. Just let it out of you. And so we need to understand that we need to keep calm while we're hatching this greatness. You see, there's nothing to be lost by being, a d by being somebody who is, is out there. There's everything to be gained as we start to move forward with this hatching of greatness. So do I have your permission and your excitement to say, this is a transformative weekend if you allow it to be? Is that true? Look, this is, this, why not? Why not is the question you have to ask yourself. If you were given this opportunity to just cross the road from where you are, would you say yes or would you be afraid to be caught in traffic? So as you leave here, I want you to know that I love every one of you as chiropractors, as people, but I love you most when you, ex when you accept the responsibility to cross the road to become the person that you would love to be. Thank you very much.